Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. This is right after the Tommy Fury KSI match. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also give a shout out to a 13 and a half point underdog that went into Colorado yesterday in NCAA football and handled business. I'll be wearing the gear from that school for, let's say, as, as many days as I can uh, before I do laundry. Anyway, let's talk about this fight. You know, these fights are very important for boxing. And I mean very important for boxing because these fights show you how great real fighters are. Now, before I say anything further, let me just say I thought KSI won the fight. Let's talk about it just math-wise. It's a six-round fight. KSI, on my scorecard, wins the first round. Then he comes out, he wins the second round, and he gets one point deducted from his opponent for a rabbit punch. Right? Understand, Tommy Fury, and it's something that the rest of the family is going to have to talk to him about. How could you be the professional fighter in a boxing match and be forced to resort to rabbit punches early in the fight? Was KSI that much faster than you? Was your toolkit that limited where you had to start rabbit punching him in the first round? I mean, understand, the announcers on the feed I watched, they actually said, hey, if he does it again, the ref's going to have to take a point away, and Tommy Fury hits him with yet another rabbit punch. So math-wise... Understand, by the end of the second round, in a six-round fight, KSI has a three-point lead, a 10-9 and a 10-8 round. So all KSI has to do to win the fight, right, given that there are four rounds left, is to win one more round. That's all he had to do. Now, in the comment section of this video, educate all of us. Educate me, please. Is the fight you saw one where Tommy Fury pulls away the last four rounds? Did the last four rounds here look like Bevel against Canelo? Right, where one guy figures out the other, then just starts banking rounds, and you say, wow, this fight has shifted. Right, if you believe. Canelo won uh, the early part of the fight. Was that the feeling you got here? I got the feeling that this was a clinch fest, and it was surprising. <laughs> it was surprising. Uh, this was an in-the-pocket clinch fest. And the reason it's surprising is when the fight starts, KSI, who's in his 30s, by the way. We're not talking about some guy straight off a high school campus. No, he's in his 30s. So this is a guy who has watched boxing for years. And KSI comes out, and he's on his toes, and he's jumping up and down. So you think, okay, wow, he's, you know, looking like he's going to be a mover here, right? I want you to think about the great movers in the sport. Let me name some of them. Dimitri Bevel, who I mentioned earlier. How about Tyson Fury from Tommy Fury's family, right? Look at his movement against Vladimir Klitschko. How about Demetrius Andre, who's about to fight David Benavides in style-wise what could be an amazing fight, right? Think about the cruiserweight champion, Jay Obataya, right? Think about the guy who lost to Inoue in the unification match, Stephen Fulton, who is an elite mover, right? When you see those guys before a fight on their toes, you know, bouncing, you know, showing you their legs, you understand that a pocket is 
not going to form for several rounds. <laughs> you understand that movers aren't going to be holding you from the opening bell of the first round. Right? They're not going to be grappling with you. The whole point of having legs is so you can dictate where and when the action happens. Right? Movers are supposed to be moving around the ring. I, I guarantee you that Demetrius Andre doesn't plan to meet Benavides in the middle of the ring and be grappling with him for the first few rounds of the fight. I guarantee you that's not going to happen. Right? If Jay Obataya fights Maris Breedis again, Obataya is not going to stand in the middle of the ring and wrestle with Maris Breedis. Right? When you have legs, you use them. You let the other guy know, player, you need to catch up with me. What I want people to do, too, let's name another uh, great fighter. Please take out a film of Floyd Mayweather against, I'll name two fights randomly, Diego Corrales or Juan Manuel Marquez. Understand, when Floyd fights Diego Corrales, Corrales is unbeaten. Right? Marquez is a Hall of Famer. Now, you're going to see something on those films that you didn't see in this fight, and it's shocking. Right? Just understand, you're going to see something called the left hook. Right now, there are many times in this fight where KSI is outside at the beginning of the round, right? A few seconds into the round, of course, he's in the pocket wrestling with uh, Tommy Fury, right? But just understand, KSI is outside. Then he would leap into the pocket with a right hand. Now, let me criticize Tommy Fury here. You're the professional fighter in this fight. Some guy is predictably throwing long right hands from distance, right? Long right hands from distance. Let me ask Tommy a question. Player, have you ever thought about countering that right hand? I mean, understand, KSI's coming in, that's a looping punch. I'm just telling you that if KSI dared try that against someone like Canelo, Canelo would block the shot and then just rip apart KSI's midsection. Since, of course, when KSI throws that right hand, KSI is on his way into the pocket. He's not even throwing the punch and moving. So just understand, I know we're calling this a boxing match. I'm being charitable. Right, folks? This is really not far removed from an entry-level boxing match where the guys, including Tommy Fury, look like they're just learning the sport. Let's do this, too. Please, put on a tape of Jaron Ennis, <laughs> right? Please, you know, or Roberto Duran. What you're going to notice is as Duran comes forward into the pocket, look at the first Ray Leonard fight. I don't even have to go back to Duran as lightweight. And understand, Duran is one of the best lightweights in history, right? You saw his second and third act when he gains weight, and he's hanging around 147 against the Ray Leonards of the world. Then he gains weight up to 160. And he goes the distance, not 12 rounds, but 15 rounds with Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Right? Just understand, Duran comes inside, and you're going to notice he keeps not just his right hand free, which KSI does, but he keeps both hands free sometimes as he comes in because he knows how to fight small. The other guy doesn't have his left hand perpetually in a chokehold like Tommy Fury has KSI's left hand here, right? The other guy's not tying him up and leaving one hand free. No, Duran has two hands free. Duran, Duran is even pulling down your hands deep in the pocket so he can get in his shots. So here you have two guys in a wrestling match that's disguised as a boxing match. You have KSI throwing long right hands that Tommy Fury, for some reason 
can't block and can't counter. Right? You have Tommy Fury resorting to rabbit punches from the first round. Now, I've seen fights where guys get dirty when they're losing. I thought Felix Trinidad against El Feroz. Fernando Vargas started throwing low punches when he realized that he needed to win rounds well into the match. But you don't expect that early in the fight. <laughs> you, don't, you don't expect that in the first or second round where a guy is brazenly throwing rabbit punches. Well, let me just say this. After KSI is up by three, I thought KSI won the fifth round. Right? Tommy does make a comeback in the fight, but I thought KSI wins the fifth round. An argument can be made that KSI wins the sixth round. So you have an outcome here that's perfect. It's perfect for promoters. Because I'm just telling you, the day of the fight, at, right after the fight, I'm just telling you that there's going to be a group out there that's going to believe that KSI got robbed in this fight. Right? Because there's no stretch of this match. No stretch. Where Tommy Fury looks like Dimitri Bevel against Canelo. Where you look at it and you say, wow, you know, Tommy Fury has taken over this fight. Right? There's just, you know, there was a fight. Lawrence, Lawrence Okoye against Chris Billum Smith. Right? Where Billum Smith takes over the fight. And there's a multi-round stretch there where you say, okay, this is CBS's night. Right? He has taken over this fight. Okoye is going to have to get himself back in this. Folks, I saw this fight. Keep in mind, KSI is up by three points after two rounds in a six-round fight. And there's never the stretch where you think, oh, you know, Tommy Fury has taken over the fight. Tell me, too, what's going on with the clinches, right? It seemed to me that Tommy Fury was determined to grab KSI's left hand, right? KSI still has the right hand that he's been throwing from distance free and then is hitting Tommy Fury with it, right? Did KSI throw any big left hooks in this fight that you saw? Let me say this too. When KSI gets in the pocket, it's not as if KSI knows what he's doing. Folks, you're, you're not fighting Nigel Benn here. Right? You're not fighting Roberto Duran here. Right? You're not fighting Canelo in the pocket here. So KSI throws some big right... You know when he gets in the pocket, Fury's going to grab his left hand, and then KSI, while he's grabbed, is going to throw some right hands like this. Why grab KSI's hand? Don't you want him deep in the pocket? Right? KSI is hinting, <laughs> and that's all he does. He's hinting of having legs where he could circle you like Ali circled Sonny Liston. Right? But he doesn't. In other words... These celebrity YouTuber fights, and nothing wrong with being a YouTuber, but these celebrity YouTuber fights are guys who can copy certain crowd-pleasing traits of fighters. But KSI missed the part of the Ali or Tyson Fury or Larry Holmes game where they actually do something with their legs. Right? They're not just up there bouncing, you know, around at the beginning of rounds. No, you come at Ali, and he's actually throwing punches. Right? He's actually punishing you as you come forward. Right? That Liston rematch isn't the phantom punch in Ali right hand as Liston jumps into the pocket. Ali's preventing a pocket from forming. Right? Isn't that supposed to be what movement's about? Right? You're saying to the other person, hey, you're going to have to find me. Then as the other guy's trying to find you, you're throwing Floyd Mayweather left hooks and their sledgehammer left hooks. Right? I believe Canelo learned a lot from fighting Floyd and started highlighting his left hook after fighting Floyd. I believe Floyd's left hook was that devastating. 
right? Instead here, we get a clinch fest. Folks, we didn't even get a clinch fest when Marvin Hagler was fighting Ray Leonard, right? Ray's keeping his hands free, isn't he? Ray's flurrying up against the ropes. Here, someone should take out a stopwatch and time how much of the six rounds Tommy Fury is holding on to KSI's left shoulder. I mean, you would have thought Tommy Fury, with all the clinching, was fighting Ray Leonard, was fighting Hector Camacho or Manny Pacquiao, some guy with ridiculous hand speed, where you're saying, man, I got to tie this dude up. I can't handle the hand speed. No, he's fighting one-handed KSI. KSI does have a left hook, but we didn't see it in this fight. Right? So just understand, this was a clinch fest. It was a bit odd. Let me say this, too. I don't know what was going on with KSI's left hand because he's not throwing left hooks. He's also not even establishing a jab. You know, I'm a son of the Larry Holmes era, right? There are fights where you understood the fight did not start until Larry's opponent figured out how to get by Larry's jab. Right here, KSI looks like Larry Holmes, right? He's he's bouncing, and you say, oh, this is, you know, he's going to be outside daring Tommy Fury to get through his jab. Then he's not throwing the jab. He's not throwing the left hook. And, of course, he's throwing that leaping right hand with impunity because Tommy Fury, professional fighter, unbeaten record, has no clue how to counter it. Right? I mean, I mean... No clue. No clue how to counter it, right? Uh, Tommy seems to have missed, and I mean it, seems to have missed his brother's fights against Deontay Wilder. Right, folks, you, you, you can't let some fighters just throw big right hands at you without doing something, right? His brother, you know, figured out how to deal with with uh, Deontay Wilder's right hand when he wasn't getting knocked down, right? His brother's actually winning some rounds fighting. How about his brother against Vladimir Klitschko, right? His brother hardly gets hit with any of Vladimir's right hands, and Vladimir Klitschko's right hands were huge, right? How does Tommy Fury find a way in six rounds against KSI who's not throwing a left hook to get hit more with KSI's right hand than his brother got hit with heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko's right hand over 12 rounds. Well, let's just say uh, I enjoyed the fight because I like to see what excellent athletes, KSI's an excellent athlete. He has stamina. He, you know, although he's huffing and puffing here, but he has stamina, he's athletic, uh, he does bounce around the ring, right? Um, I like seeing how the public thinks the fight game is, right? But all I'm saying here in the comment section of this video, if you saw KSI land a left hook, please, in the comment section, tell us the round and the time. Okay, if you saw Tommy Fury counter a KSI uh, looping right hand without clinching KSI and holding him, tell us the time and the round. Right? My conclusion, other than that I thought KSI won the fight. Again, he's up by three after two. I believe he wins the fifth round. I think an argument can be made that he wins the sixth round. My point to you is... When you're down and you need the last four rounds of a fight, which is what Tommy Fury needed, if the public doesn't see you do a sweep, if viewers don't think that you turned it on and jetted away, right? If they don't see Dimitri Bevel against Canelo, then you haven't done it. And I, I just don't believe Tommy did it in this very sloppy, very pocket-centric, very grabby fight. Let me say this, too. You know, not only is the fight light on KSI left hooks, folks, 
how are two guys this much in the pocket without either of them throwing uppercuts? Right? Let's, let's just say, you know, when you see these guys, you realize how much better real fighters are. That's my take. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.